quick little intro for you. We're going over to a day trip in the Bahamas. Uh, we'll do another sticker giveaway. Just comment below which sticker design you'd like. You can see all the designs on h2ovinyldesigns.com. That's my website where you can buy any of my hats or stickers. Subscribe to the channel and follow on Instagram at h2ovinyldesigns. Enjoy the video. Cruising out in style on the Invincible. What is she doing? Am I going in with a spear? Get, bring a spear. So when I first hopped in the water, I was using my Hawaiian sling and came up on a nice strawberry grouper sitting on a rock. These uh, strawberries don't get very big. And this one was pretty cool. He let me swim right up to him and plugged him with the sling. All right, Taylor, come here. The shallow stuff that we were diving here, we we're kind of focusing more on hogfish in the sandy bottom. And it looks pretty clear in the video, but really wasn't super clear for Bahama water. It was really green. It's really hard to see those hogfish from up top. They're just so good at blending in with all the fans and stuff down there. Those fish you saw there were a bunch of big parrotfish. They have a bunch of these big blue parrotfish. They look, they look like grouper when you see them at first a lot of the time. You see this big round fish. Here is a hogfish that gave me a pretty good shot on him. And I was almost able to grab the spear before he turned in the Hussein Bolt hogfish and hauled butt away. But Scott was real close to me, and as I came up to breathe up and get ready to go back down again, I called for him, and he was already right there, and he was ready to swim on down and. Uh, Grab that hogfish. On this drop, uh, I saw another hogfish and I couldn't find it, but as I kept looking around, I eventually spotted them because they were blending in really well. And I lined up on him and I was going to take the shot. He was a legal hogfish, but we're only allowed one per person, so four for the boat. And it wasn't a very big one, so didn't shoot that one. Let him swim off, hoping to find some bigger ones. Um, 
Then out here, we moved out to some stuff that was a little bit deeper. Probably more like in the 50 foot range or so. I saw a tail go right under this ledge and I could tell it was a big fish. I didn't know what it was. And as I lined up, had the sling pulled back, I looked up under the ledge and I realized I was aiming at the tail of the fish. And it was probably like a 40 pound Kibera snapper and I pulled it big time on this one. We'll show you that one again in slow motion. That, I mean, that was a solid fish. And if you look in the sand in the background, you'll see a nice black. Uh, I don't know where he came from, but I think when I shot, scared him away too. See him in the background right here. Then we were getting towed behind the boat and we saw what we thought was a dead hogfish laying on the bottom. You can see the very beginning of this clip. It just looked like someone placed a hogfish mount on the bottom on its side and as Scott started swimming down on it, the fish just got up and started swimming away and he just kept moving, never got him either. But that was another decent sized hogfish. Big old male, probably like in the six, seven pound range or so. And then uh, we just kept moving around in like the 55 foot stuff and uh, did a few drops. I didn't have the camera on when Scott went down on this next fish, but this is pretty much the same bottom we were on. And he was able to find a nice Kubera as we were, I think it was following a mutton and then this Kubera just came up like right up to him and gave him a good shot on it. Probably about a 12 pound Kubera or so. Wanna get in or do another drop? What? And then here's one of our last spots of the day. It was a pretty nice coral head and I dropped down on it with the sling and we kept seeing these dog snapper go in and out of really one hole on the coral head so I swam down with the sling loaded up and sure enough I could see him right in there but I didn't want to risk shooting that sling and having it not go all the way through the fish because there's a rock behind him and then lose him so I went back up figured he'd just still kind of be hanging right in that hole and came back with the pole spear uh, this is the Poseidon pole spear, and I really wish I had this when I saw that big Kubera. This thing just has so much more power than that uh, little sling I use. The sling's good for hogs, but this pole spear just packs a punch, and I let it fly. Hit the Kubera, or not the Kubera, the dog snapper, and um, just let it go because I didn't know where I hit him, so I just let it go down there and went back, checked it out, and I could see I kind of hit him like right in the guts. So I'm glad I didn't pull it hard then, and then I just grabbed the fish and kind of ripped him off the spear and. Uh, went back down, grabbed the spear, and that was it for the day. Finished it off with a nice little dog snapper. So there's another day trip in the books uh, on the 21 foot angler slash invincible. Hopefully go back in a couple days, get some redemption on that Kubera and maybe find some bigger blacks and some bigger hogfish. Now that you're only allowed one per person, it really pushes us to look for bigger fish. There's the hog. There is a dog snapper and a strawberry grouper. These strawberry grouper don't get very big, but they're a very tasty fish. Well, that about wraps it up for this video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Later.